What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back, moving on to the next question. We gotta draw these four graphs over here. Notice that they are all parabolas. So we're starting with the basic parabola, y equals x squared, that parent function, and then we're going to transform it in different ways. So starting with y equals x squared, we know that that's just a basic parabola that has a vertex at zero and zero. So it looks something like that. Right, you can make a table of values as well. This second graph, y equals x squared plus 2, is basically this graph here, but just shifted up by two units. So instead of having the vertex at 0 and 0, we're now going to have the vertex over here at 0 and uh, 2. Right, so it's going to look something like that. And then y equals x plus 2 squared. This is different than this because this over here is the d value. If you remember your transformations from high school, so basically x plus 2, we're shifting x squared two units to the left. So the vertex is going to be at negative 2 and 0. We can also get a y intercept here. Um, you could plug in 0 for x and you'd end up with two to the power two, which would be four, so that would be like over here. Right, so you'd get a parabola that basically looks like that. Perhaps not as symmetrical in this drawing, but you get the idea. The vertex would be at negative two and zero. So that's these first three. Now this one is a little bit trickier to deal with, because notice it's not in that nice transformation form. It's not in vertex form. So we can actually put it in vertex form. That's one way to go about it. Let's actually do that. So we'll have uh, x squared plus 4x minus 7. So we would complete the square on this. So we'd have to take that b value divided by 2 and square it. So 4 divided by 2 is 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Now, First thing you always want to check is, is that x squared by itself? And notice that it is. There's only a 1 in front, so we don't have to factor anything out first. So we could just complete the square from here. So we'd have y equals x squared plus 4x. Uh, when we did the b over 2 squared, we got 4. So we do plus 4, minus 4, and then we have to add that minus 7 at the end. So we're adding that b over 2 squared term. We're adding it and then subtracting it. So it's like this is 0. Right, so it's not, it's the exact same thing as this. We're just adding more to the function. The reason why we do that is because now these three values, it's always going to be a perfect square trinomial. And then minus four minus seven, that gives us negative 11, like that. And so from here, we could tell what's the vertex. The vertex is negative two and negative 11 of this parabola over here. So if we graph that, negative 2, let's say, is over here, negative 11, let's say it's like down here. Notice that from here we could also tell what's the y-intercept pretty easily. If we plug in 0 for x, we'd have 0, negative 7 over here, right? So we'd end up getting a parabola that basically looks something like this. Now, another way you can graph parabolas, is try to factor them, put them in factored form. But this parabola here, it's actually not going to factor smoothly. The x-intercepts, they're actually going to be decimal values. But you can find them out. You can still find the exact value of them if you want. Uh, so if we plug this into the quadratic formula, What's the quadratic formula? Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, like that. So the b value is 4, so we'd have negative 4 plus or minus negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7, like that, all over 2 times 1. And so this would simplify to what? We'd have negative 4 plus or minus, this would be 16, negative 4 times negative 7 is positive 28, so we'd have 16 plus 28, which would give us 44, and then this would be all over 2. But we could simplify this further because this radical, root 44, we can actually rewrite that as root 4 times root 11, and then root 4 is 2. 
right? If you remember your simplifying radicals, you can take a radical and you could try to split it up into a rootable number, rootable numbers being like four, 9, 16, etc. Now, 44 can't divide by 9, can't divide by 16, but luckily it can divide by 4. And we'd be left with an 11 there. And then root 11, you can't simplify any further. So this over here simplifies to, uh, the root 44 simplifies to 2 root 11. They're the exact same thing if you plug them into your calculator. Square root of 44, 2 root 11. And then from here, what you could do, now that we have a coefficient in front of the root, we can factor out a two. And there would be like a one left here, so we don't even have to write that. And then we'd still have that root 11. This is gonna be all over two. And then notice the twos, they cancel out. And so we'd end up with negative two plus or minus root. 11. If you want a little bit more practice in dealing with radicals and simplifying radicals, let me know and I could send you some links to the grade 11 high school course. I go over a lot more examples there. But uh, right here, notice these are two values, right? So 2x intercepts, x equals negative 2 minus root 11, and then x equals negative 2 plus root 11. So this would be negative 2 minus root 11. And if you do this in your calculator, it'd be approximately negative 5.32. This would be approximately 1.32. Negative 5.32, and then this would be positive 1.32. And notice, what's another way to get the x value of the vertex? You can add the two x-intercepts and divide by 2, because it's going to be in between those, right? So if we add negative 5.32 plus 1.32, that would give us negative four. Divide by two would give us that x value of the vertex, negative two. Another way to get the x value of the vertex, if you have a quadratic in standard form like this, it's just basically negative b over 2a, like that. Okay, so what's the b value? It's four, but we'll make it a negative over 2, the a value is 1, so 2 times 1, what's this going to give us? Negative 2, right? That's the uh, x value of that vertex. Then you could plug in negative 2 into the original function to get the y value, the corresponding y value of the vertex, which is negative 11. So lots of different ways to go about this. The, personally, what I like to look for is does the quadratic factor first? And then I just like to get the x-intercepts, but this one didn't factor, so I completed the square to get that uh, vertex, right? Multiple ways to do it. This is the final graph.